happy happy sabbath and good morning to you indeed this is the day that the lord has made and we rejoice and be glad in it i pray and hope that you have had a, a wonderful sleep as i have and we are up and about ready to get to fellowship with fellow brethren for the bible says let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together So I invite you in a special way. Thank you for walking together with me throughout the entire week, for praying for me and with me. And indeed, it has been uh, a tremendous experience. I have uh, been inspired. And uh, I believe uh, God has been with us every way. Let us believe as we pray. Our kind and everlasting master who is in heaven. We claim this morning the promise that you speak to Isaiah. That let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord for he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Here we are beseeching that this may be our experience of coming back to you. And may you lead us even as we be inspired through your word. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The scriptures are the great agency for the transformation of character. If studied and obeyed, the word of God works in the heart, subduing every unholy attribute. The religion of the Bible is the only safeguard for the young. Let us anchor our faith in the word of God. Our sharing this morning is entitled, This Man Receives Sinners. This Man Receives Sinners. And I want us to turn our attention to the book of Luke chapter 15. We shall read verse one and two. The Bible says, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. I believe one of the most inspiring passages in scripture are these words that this man receives sinners. The Bible says in verse one, then drew near unto him all the sinners and the public, all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. Yes, Jesus draws us nigh unto him, but there is a part of us that we have to do. Jesus did not go carrying all the publicans and the sinners and bringing them to where he was. But rather, they came of their own accord with their own two feet. 
salvation is not the work of Jesus alone or the work of God alone, but rather it's a cooperation between the divine and humanity. For us to be saved, we have to come to Jesus Christ. We have to be listening to the bleedings of the Holy Spirit and make a step to come boldly to the throne of grace. And so the Bible says, they drew to where Jesus was. Now, dear friends, I don't know how Jesus, I don't see how Jesus can be a savior if he cannot be approached by those who want to be saved. And this morning, there are two aspects of Jesus Christ that make him approachable. One of them is found in the book of John chapter one, verse 29, whereby the Bible says, the next day John seeth Jesus coming and they said, behold the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Now, Jesus is portrayed as a lamb. The first aspect of how we can approach, how Jesus is approachable is that he is portrayed as a lamb. Nobody in the entire world is afraid of a lamb, be it a young child or a very old man. Everybody wants to take the lamb and cuddle it and be in its warm embrace. And that is the depiction we are given in scripture of Jesus Christ as the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. And so we can approach him because he is indeed, uh, he, he is a lamb that easily we can lay our heads on his bosom. He can uh, embrace us in his warm embrace. And I believe he can tell us that no matter what has happened to you, I am here to receive you. Then the second thing that makes Jesus Christ approachable is found in the book of uh, John chapter 10, verse 11. The Bible says, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And so one other quality that makes Jesus Christ approachable is that he is the good shepherd. Now in the Western countries in those Eastern regions, we have to discover that the shepherd was always in the lead and the sheep followed him. And the attribute of the shepherd, as we read down in the book of Luke chapter 15, it comes out so clear on how he is. He is concerned about his flock and he knows even their number. And so Jesus Christ is a good shepherd. He is a protector of his flock. And so dear friend, this blessed morning, you can approach him. And then the Bible says, and the scribes, the Pharisees and the scribes murmured saying, now I don't want to dwell, I, that is, I, I believe another entirety of something that uh, I don't have time for right now. But I'm more concerned with the last portions of what the scribes and the Pharisees said. They said, this man receives sinners and eats with them. This was an accusation. They were true words spoken in jest. They hoped to slander and defame the name of Jesus Christ not knowing that they heaped upon him a title of renown, a title that through all endless ages has been a solace for sinners who come to Jesus Christ. He receives everybody who comes to him. Now, the Bible doesn't say that he receives everybody. 
the Bible doesn't say that, but rather it says he receives sinners. Now, you see, there are some people who are self-righteous who feel that they don't have need of a savior. So therefore, Jesus cannot receive them. Hence, the Bible says that I came to seek and to save that which is lost. Again, the word of God says, they that behold need no physician, but those that are sick. And so the Bible classifies and it says very clearly that he came to receive the sinners. But before that, in the beginning, it was classifying the publicans and the sinners as separate, meaning that the publicans were a class of a different kind of uh, a set of sinners. This wonderful morning, if you tend to think that you are a different breed from all the other sinners, you can come to Jesus Christ because he receives you. If I have got to go back uh, a little bit, the word publicans is another name for a tax collector. And actually it has a connotation of a thief, somebody who steals. Now in the days of Jesus Christ, if there were people who were hated so much, they were even hated by other sinners, they were the tax collectors. And it's so amazing that when Jesus Christ appeared on the scene, he received them. I don't know about you. No matter how much different you think you may be from all of us who are sinners, I can honestly tell you that Jesus Christ receives everybody. He is no respecter of persons. The songwriter, I believe, Macomb says, all the height of Jesus' love, higher than the heavens, deeper than the deepest sea, lasting as eternity, love that found me wondrous thought, found me when I was lost. Yes, you are the chief of sinners. Jesus Christ will receive you if you come to him. Jesus Christ delights in receiving sinners and we can come to him. Now, he does not receive sinners and then they continue to be in that condition. But rather, he receives sinners that they may be reconciled to him. He receives sinners to holiness. He receives sinners to his kingdom, that where he is, we may be there with him forever and forever. <laughs> he receives sinners. And instead of a crown of anxiety, a crown of perplexity, he gives us the crown of life. The proverb says, show me your friends and I will tell you your character. And so the Pharisees and the scribes hope to say that Jesus Christ in walking with the sinners, he had become defiled. But this is one proverb which does not apply in the case of Jesus Christ. All those who came to Jesus Christ, they never left the way they came. Yes, come the way you are. But when you meet Jesus Christ, never leave the way you came. If you are going north, you go south. If you are going west, you go east. Because Jesus Christ delights in receiving sinners. There's a, a heathen philosopher, a philosopher. His name is called Seneca. And he had uh, this habit of always eating with his slaves. He was a very rich man in the old Roman Empire. And so his fellow associates asked him why he was bringing mockery 
upon the elite of society by eating with slaves. And his defense was so simple. He said, I eat with them because some of them are worth of my company. And then number two, which is most profound, I eat with them that they may also be like me. Jesus Christ eats with sinners. He dines with us who feel the want of a savior that we may be like him. You see, sinners are not lost because they are unlike other men. They are lost because they are not in the right relations with Jesus Christ. And so ready is Jesus Christ to receive sinners who come to him that he will even receive the devil's cast away. I don't know about you. I love this man, Jesus Christ. Yes, he's both man and divine. He delights in receiving us. Scripture is replete with a lot of inspiration that Jesus Christ was indeed a man. The Bible says in the book of uh, First Peter, uh, First Timothy, rather, chapter two, verse five. But there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He understands our infirmities. He understands what you and I go through. And he says, come my child, I am ready to receive you. You can approach this fellow man and for sure he will not lock you out. He wants you to be with him. He wants me to be with him. This man receives sinners. I don't know about you. I love this man. I love what he has done in my life. He is the suffering of the entire universe. He has never been voted out and his term will never come to an end. He says to you and to me, let us come to him. He delights in mercy. He will cast all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. If that is your prayer this blessed morning, that you may get to come to him because he is approachable, I want to invite you that we may get to pray together. Dear Lord and dear Father who is in heaven, here we are again. Sinners who are in need of a savior. You came to this world, you left your humble abode, you left all the glories of heaven and you are entangled in this sin forsaken world whereby you are forsaken, persecuted, and even died a shameful death that we may have life. And therefore you bid us come to you. There is somebody this morning who is saying, Lord, here I am, please take me. As I am, I come to you. May you change us that we may reflect your glory and your image in everything that we do. May we be a blessing whatsoever place whereby we shall worship today for thine glory and glory alone. For this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen.